Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Innovation in Motion webinar series in celebration of the State Transportation Innovation Council's 10th anniversary. Thank you for joining us today for our fourth and final webinar of the series. Uh, my name is Anya Walker with PennDOT's Bureau of Innovations, and I am your mo moderator for today's session. Before we get started, I just wanted to review a few housekeeping items uh, with all of you. You may have noticed that all of, all of our attendees are muted today. If you need closed captioning, clap captioning, you can select the closed captioning icon in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. A question and answer period will follow today's presentation. So if you have any questions during the session, during the presentations, please use the chat box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to submit your questions. And before I introduce um, our speakers today, please be advised that this session is being recorded. So if you ask a question or comment in the chat box during the session, please note that by doing so, you are consenting to the recording, retention, and use of your statements recorded as part of this session. I'd like to kick things off this morning with opening remarks from our PennDOT Acting Executive Deputy Secretary, Melissa Batula. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to the last of our inaugural Innovation in Motion webinar series, where we've been highlighting initiatives PennDOT's pursuing to continue evolving and improving. Today, we'll hear from three of our technology leaders on the digital delivery and transportation innovations that we are pursuing. These innovations are critically important to help us evolve our procedures to keep our transportation network in the best possible condition. PennDOT's e-construction and partnering efforts continue to move forward with various initiatives, including the piloting of e-ticketing and augmented reality and our Digital Delivery Directive 2025. Our e-ticketing journey started last construction season with all of our engineering districts piloting the e-ticketing mobile construction app to improve the handling and delivery of our needed construction and maintenance materials. Common construction practice calls for the issuance of paper ticket tickets detailing information regarding the materials delivered on site. The details include the original source and manufacturer of the materials, the design, and the quantity. But the paper-based process poses some safety risks, especially when PennDOT and contractor staff have to climb up on and move around the material on top of delivery trucks next to live traffic. Instead of paper ticketed, tickets, the e-ticketing innovation features electronic systems made available via web browsers or apps on smart devices that allow us to see the ticket electronically. The e-ticketing solution will provide consistency and data captured across the state, as well as limited interaction with delivery trucks, providing for a safer work environment for construction inspection staff. The Augmented Reality and Transportation Initiative is looking at different technologies that combine virtual and real world providing real-time interaction and accurate 3D representation of virtual and real objects. This initiative will improve communication between field and office employees and assist with construction inspection, structural material shop inspections, bridge inspections, and incident management. It will also enhance training and simplify certification of bridge inspection staff. Overall, we continue to work on our Digital Delivery Directive 2025, or 3D 2025 for short, this initiative aims to transition PennDOT from 2D plan sheets to 3D models. This will build deliverables that are human readable and machine readable at the same time, with the goal of using digital, digital data throughout the project lifestyle. Simply stated, the initiative is that by 2025, construction projects will be bid using 3D technology and no longer be in traditional construction plan format. This will help PennDOT to incorporate streamlined processes throughout the project development process. Contractors and construction inspectors will use the digital information at the project site. This will include uh, increased construction efficiency by improving design quality and reducing risks, project costs, and delays. Contractors will also benefit from a more detailed representation of the design intent delivered in a usable format. This will enable enhanced construction planning and less time extracting information, such as estimating construction layout. 
So thanks for joining us today. I'm sure you will find the webinar to be interesting and inspiring as we work together to move PennDOT ever forward. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Deputy Secretary Batula, for setting the stage for today's presentation. I'd like to uh, welcome our three speakers for today's webinar. Um, our first speaker is Kelly Barber. He's, she is the Systems Management Division Chief in PennDOT's Bureau of Construction Materials, and she will present an overview of the e-construction and e-ticketing initiatives uh, for the department. And then um, John Myler, the Assistant Construction Manager in PennDOT District 11, will present on the use of UAS in construction. And last but not least, Ella Melly, the Chief of the Digital Delivery Section in PennDOT's Bureau of Design and Delivery, will present on PennDOT's digital directive. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to all of our presentations this morning, and then following those three presentations, we're going to move into our uh, question and answer period. So I welcome Kelly, John, and Ellen this morning, this morning, and I thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for allowing us the opportunity to provide an update on the department's e-construction initiative. As you all are aware, the team has been very busy and dedicated to this initiative for the past decade, implementing multiple mobile applications and PPCC. The team continues researching and coordinating with our counterparts in other states and industry to further our development. The team's initial goal of reducing paper on a construction project was just the starting point. Today, we are taking e-construction to another level by introducing different technologies for our field staff, contractors, and suppliers to use. Specifically for today, John Myler and I will be diving into where we are at with e-ticketing, augmented reality pilot projects, and the usage of UAS or drones on construction sites and the added benefits we are experiencing. A real quick recap, the department started e-ticketing in District 11 prior to 2020, and the initiative kicked off at a statewide level during the summer of 2020 in order to get us prepared for the 2021 pilot season projects. An overarching steering committee was put in place and three teams developed to tackle the various aspects of e-ticketing, specification, the IT portion of it, and hauling. The committee and work groups consist of key representatives from industry, the Turnpike, and Federal Highway Administration. Prior to the development of the specification, the committee identified the materials to be included with the pilot projects, asphalt, concrete, and aggregate for the construction specification, and in addition to those materials, maintenance plans to utilize it for a liquid asphalt and salt. Uh, but currently, our maintenance pilot projects are on hold. The specification also needed to address the possibility of limited or no service on the construction site or at the plant. The specification team worked diligently to prepare and receive approvals in record time for the pilot projects in 2021 and update the specification in the fall of 21 based on feedback from the department and industry. The required fields for the specific material ticket are spelled out in the specification and the e-ticketing item of work is currently lump sum. By having the item lump sum, suppliers are able to recoup those upfront costs associated with either updating their systems to provide the information or procure an e-ticketing solution. The department does not specify, nor do we plan to specify, the e-ticketing solution the suppliers are using. There are multiple vendors on the market at all different price points. Knowing that we wanted to be able to accommodate multiple vendors with multiple applications and web portals, the team also realized you know, that our inspection staff really only needed one application to receive an e-ticket. Uh, it would be a little bit much uh, having that expectation for our inspection team to be fluent in multiple apps uh, specific to the e-ticketing. Uh, you know, it wasn't realistic to have that expectation. So in coordination with the department's IT delivery center, a mobile application was developed to accept vendor supplied tickets. The e-ticketing systems connect to the department's application through an API allowing inspectors access to the ticket information in real time. 
We plan to store this information in our material system ECAMS. We went live with our application July 1st, 2021. The department has been working with multiple vendors on the connectivity through the API to our application. Through this outreach and as a result of the first pilot season after action reviews with industry, the department wanted to ensure everyone was having an equal opportunity to connect, making sure those that were not yet part of a pilot project had the ability to connect and provide tickets in the future. The department has contracted with Hall Hub to assist with this transition. Hall Hub has the ability to work with multiple e-ticketing solutions and is providing the bridge to the department's application at no cost to the supplier or the contractor. Uh, we currently provide uh, three options as shown here. So option one, if the producer or the contractor has an internal IT application and resources, they've been able to, and have been able to provide the coding to connect to our system. So they're able to do that on their own. Uh, option two, if they have an existing e-ticketing system in place and their vendor has them set up through the API, they can connect in that manner. But if their vendor has not been successful in pushing tickets to the PennDOT application, they can work with Hall Hub to assist in establishing that connection. And then the third option is for producers with minimal IT resources and no e-ticketing solution, Hall Hub is able to provide a simple solution to get the tickets to our portal. Once the supplier or contractor is able to provide the data uh, to the department's application, it will be available to the inspector on site for all ECMS projects. The supplier is associated uh, we continue to analyze the application and coordinate uh, with the districts and industry on what is working and what needs to be enhanced. So the next few slides will demonstrate what an inspector is able to see on their iPads. So they have the ability uh, to search for tickets. So when they log in, they will have a dashboard showing the status of all tickets, whether it's in transit or received. Uh, once in the ticket, they're able to provide their comments. As you can see here, they're able to put in the temp where it was located. And then this here is an example of our web portal that we created for our inspection, our inspectors. Uh, so all of the ticket information also resides here. So if, if they're not in the field for the day, but they're back in the office, they are able to pull it up on this web portal uh, and review it here. We are currently in the process of collecting feedback from the department staff and industry on this past season's pilot projects with the expectation of any uh, specification updates to be available starting the first quarter in 2023. Uh, we are also planning to expand the number of pilot projects per district this year. As we continue to move forward with full implementation, we are aware of some concerns from the supplier side uh, for some suppliers, PennDOT is not their main recipient of their materials, so they are determining how this impacts them. Others may have limited network connectivity. Um, so again, that's something we have to take into consideration. And the other are the additional costs to bring their systems up to date uh, or to purchase one. So the department's contract with Hall Hub is now active and is available for five years. Uh, we will be revisiting the contract in the future to see if we will continue to offer the free services for the suppliers. And our goal is full implementation with the release of the 2024 version of the publication 408, uh, at which time this will become an incidental item of work. Uh, we are looking forward to expanding to the maintenance materials uh, here in the near future. So if you do have any specific questions regarding e-ticketing, uh, please direct those to our PennDOT eConstruct resource account. And I'm sharing that with you here so that we have a copy of it. Um, be able to take that with you. So now moving on to augmented reality. The department was able to pilot the usage of Imagion in District 11 for bridge inspection, construction, design, and material testing. Imagion is the platform which connects the office to the field via HoloLens. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, uh, here, this, this portion here is the HoloLens attached to the hard hat. So that's what the, the individual, it's only one person would be wearing that in the field. Uh, so the HoloLens, it allows for a hands-free device uh, and it's a communication tool. So not only can you see visually, but you can also hear uh, while you're on site. The benefits of using AR allowed for the team to coordinate with key staff uh, without the need for additional travel and expenses. It expedited problem solving on site 
and real-time collaboration. It also provided for all the contract documents at the touch of a button. Specific to where we are going in the future, the Imagion team is working on uh, incorporating 3D modeling so that you can walk the project with the model overlay. And here is an example from the District 11 team. Uh, their point in construction is in the field with the HoloLens, uh, and they're coordinating with others across the state and the country. Perspective of where I'm at, and again, we're, I'm right around you know, the, the move 31, 25 station, looking station ahead towards the roundabout. Uh, north is to my left currently, as I'm standing here. Uh, just to give you alignment. So, if you want to shift to the next page. So, here's here, and again, it's our, our baseline uh, 3124 on my pointer. I'm about at 3125 on my pointer. And our tar gets up through here of discussion. You see the side road on the right of this plant set here. We're actually it's going downwards. That's actually a post office entrance. The other augmented reality device the department is piloting is AMA Expert Eye. As you can see from the picture, the AMA device is smaller and has the ability to be moved uh, similar to the mic on our headsets. The structure material section in the bridge office, uh, in coordination with High Steel, utilized this product on the District 6 Betsy Ross uh, project for steel fabrication. The team also documented the advantages to utilizing AR uh, for remote visual inspection. The department has procured two devices and plan to pilot AMA further in District 11 and within the Bureau of Construction and Materials laboratory testing section and uh, additional testing within the structure materials group. Uh, within the bridge office. If you have any questions regarding the mentioned technologies presented today, please do not hesitate to reach out. Now I will turn it over to John Myler to share with you how we are using UAS in the field. Good morning. My name is John Myler, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about unmanned aerial systems, in particular their use for construction progression analysis. This is an update for 2022. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Reconstruct software, where we stand with that today. Uh, Datamate software, the new product we tested this year. And then lastly, MultiVista software and their service that they provide. Okay, up first is the Reconstruct software. Uh, today, we've currently used it on two projects in District 11, the Kenwar Bridge replacement, uh, which is pictured here on the right and the McLaughlin Run Roundabout. Uh, to date, we've only been able to capture drone flight data for these projects as we did not have 3D models. But as we progress with our plan list 2025, that will come into play here. Where we'll be able to load those models into uh, these systems for further enhancements on uh, what they can provide for us. And there's really a great potential return on investment for these, these services. Uh, We'll have a reduced need for site reviews as you can review uh, any of those flights via a web portal remotely. Uh, it's also going to help improve project completion, uh, not just the physical work, but also that timeline and really tracking how that schedule progresses and making sure that the contractors are staying within uh, that original scheduled timeline. Uh, it's also a great asset here with uh, quick calculations. So you're able to take linear foot, square areas, or even cubic area volumes uh, with a few clicks of the button, you can get quick uh, values for those. And then obviously this data can be retained for uh, great as-built records. Okay, I'm gonna take a few moments here just to show you some of the tools within the Reconstruct, uh, in particular uh, measuring tools. So across the top of the screen there, you'll see some uh, toolbars with various measurement types. You can just do straight distances uh, as this example, um, but you can also do other things like height, square areas, and volumes. So in particular here, if I wanna measure from the underside of that uh, precast arch down to the water level, just using a distance, it doesn't know where to go because it's just a distance. But if I actually go and switch that to a height measurement, it'll find the surface of the water and right angle snap that to show you that there's a difference there from elevations. So you can see these aren't just static photos. These are actually 
uh, data points, three-dimensional data points within the photographs themselves, which um, is, is really quite amazing. This is all using photogrammetry with survey data points on the project site that are located and referenced for the measuring portions of these tools. But uh, you know, again, great, great ability to be able to uh, pull data from, from basically what looks like a standard photograph. As far as reconstruct, we're currently looking at what we can do with them uh, moving forward in the future. And I'm sure we'll have uh, additional projects that we're able to uh, work with them on uh, in the coming uh, future here. Uh, up next, I want to show you some of the features of the Datamate system. This is very similar to Reconstruct, uh, the way they're able to incorporate uh, drone data, CAD files, 3D models into their system to provide us uh, tools for construction uh, progression analysis. And we're currently using it on one project in District 11, the Freedom Road project, which is north of the city. It's a relocation and roundabout project. Okay, here I want to give an overview of the project. So on the west side of the project to the left here, we're going to straighten out those bends by relocating the road. And on the right hand side or the eastern side of the project, we have a roundabout. Uh, those red lines are actually CAD file data that we uploaded into the system. As we zoom in here, you'll be able to see where that information is overlaid to really kind of provide you uh, some great information as to where things are going to get built in the real world application. Uh, and with that, um, this information, you know, can be used for sort of that clash detection, uh, any potential conflicts you may have. And that data is also going to feed the other tools I'm going to show throughout the presentation here um, for comparing that, you know, real world as built information compared to the uh, design CAD files and, and how those things lay out over time. Uh, I also want to mention here that these uh, systems are role based, so we have username and credentials to access certain projects. You can only see the projects you're supposed to. And we can limit the functionality of that user uh, for that project, so it uh, gives us that control of the data and security that, that only the right folks are accessing what they should be. This is a very cool feature of uh, the DataMate software, so you're able to take different flights and compare them kind of real time with a slider view. So you see here is we'll select a second flight uh, to compare to. So comparing uh, October 6th to August 3rd. And just by simply sliding this bar across, you can see how the project has progressed uh, between those two dates and really compare and review uh, differences. We'll also slide down the road here, there was a fairly large culvert that was cut in um, and uh, ultimately uh, covered over for the new roadway. So here you can see that culvert uh, in place back in August. And as they backfilled, you'll start to see the new kind of roadway take shape over top of that culvert. Here I wanted to show some of the overlay features. So here, these are the CAD files actually overlaid uh, on the field site. So you can see the new roadway layout where the side roads coming in and the main line is. Uh, also the precast uh, culvert that we just showed in the last photo being installed here. You can see it's just really being excavated at this point, but you're able to lay that CAD file over into the, the uh, photograph here. Uh, in addition, we can do some measurements. So you have that distance, angle, and cross sections. Uh, just real quick, show the linear foot measurement tool here. You can a couple snips and pull that data up. With all this stuff, you can also generate reports, PDF or spreadsheet files that can be downloaded and used for other purposes. Okay, here we're gonna show some of the cross-sectional tools. So this is that August 3rd box is half set. Uh, we can go over here on the toolbar and cross section. We're simply gonna click one side of the excavation to the other side and across that line, it's gonna give us basically the cross section for that area. You can come along the line here as well and you'll notice the dot moving up above to show where I'm at. 
uh, in relationship to uh, that actual measurement. And very easily, you can have a quick pull of a cross section. Um, here, we'll jump forward to October 6th. Now you can see the box has been backfilled. The road grade is starting to take shape. And we can click here from um, end of culvert to end of culvert, get those elevations of inlets and outlets and what's happening in between. So you can see that from one end, slope up, cross what will be future graded roadway, and back down the other side of that slope. And if you can think about that um, for as-built purposes, you basically have that, that slope and hillside basically laid out for you uh, as it's being constructed. Another nice feature is being able to take the current cross-sectional grade and compare it with the uh, final design elevation cross-section. So here we can go to the roundabout and pull a cross-sectional analysis. So you pull a line across, click point to point, there's your cross-section. And now if I hit this plus sign on the right side of the screen, it's going to allow me to compare that data to um, the uh, final grade. So we can pull in the final, and now you can see that comparison of where we are today versus the green line, which shows our final surface uh, elevations uh, for the project. Here I'm going to show you some of the contour and uh, volume calculation tools. So within this, uh, you can do an elevation tab. You can also install contour lines. Um, and then ultimately that kind of shows you how you could lead to volume measurements based on those grades and elevations. So here I can just simply click around a stockpile that was on site. I can interpolate that data uh, based on previous elevations and um, current elevations that we have today. And it's going to generate uh, that report with cuts, fills, net volume, area, surface area, and then also elevation changes. And of course, again, you can generate a report to use as you see fit. Uh, to wrap things up here for DataMate, just want to show two other features that, that they can also do. Um, this was another project they have where inspectors can actually tab a safety concern. And you can sort of track that safety over time. So here you look at that and say, that doesn't look too bad. Still doesn't look bad uh, back in November. Let's go back a little bit farther. And so this can be something that you can tag and track over the life of the job and really see how something progresses. And there you can see it. there was actually a utility vault that was exposed. So it was tagged as a safety issue and it can continue to be monitored over the life of the job to see how uh, something like that is uh, maintained. All right, lastly, uh, they have some clash detection tools. So here on this project, they were actually constructing a uh, bridge with uh, temporary roadway construction. And that temporary roadway actually conflicted with their foundations. So you can see as they would have eventually found out once they built the foundations, the roadway would have been impacted. So you can quickly kind of catch those types of things early and potentially avoid uh, conflicts uh, when they could be more cost costly. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about Multivista. Um, the other two companies that I spoke about, you have to secure drone flights and upload that data uh, yourself through some means. With Multivista, they took a little bit different approach on it. So while they have those tools as well, they're also able to provide photographers and drone flights with pilots um, to provide that, that information for you directly without having to separate source that. Another nice thing they have is they have a mobile application as well uh, available on iPads that the inspectors can capture photos themselves and upload those to the system uh, for uh, data retention as well. So real quick, we've been using these on group projects within uh, District 11 the past several years. 
And one of the things that we found very useful with it is in this case, we had a drainage issue on this road where you can see the contour lines were actually feeding the water across the road instead of into an inlet. So with that pre-flight grade information, we were actually able to come out here on this road and change the profile of the grade to make sure that water stayed on the one side of the road and made it into the inlet instead of crossing the road and causing a washout on a private property. So for these, these relatively minor costs, less than $10,000, um, you know, you could be saving tens of thousand dollars worth of rework or damage to other, other properties or our own property. That concludes my presentation for today. I hope you found it informative and potentially useful to you uh, in the future. We're going to continue to look at how we can expand this across the state uh, contractually and uh, provide those services to more projects uh, in the future. If you have any questions, uh, we're going to have a session here after, after this, uh, or you can feel free to reach out to me uh, in the future with my contact information uh, shown here. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to present to you today on PennDOT's Digital Transformation Initiative, Digital Delivery Directive 2025. My name is Alan Melly, and I am the chief of the digital delivery section here at Central Office. So digital delivery, what's the difference? So if you would be in a design room back in the 80s, you would see uh, something similar on the left-hand side. Today, we use modern computers developing highly detailed uh, designs on the right-hand side. So let's use an analogy for the uh, difference of digital delivery. So on the left, you have a cathode ray TV, similar to something you would see back in the 80s. Today, you would have a high definition 4K TV, um, internet ready, so you get streaming services, a lot of technology built behind that. So what we're basically doing is taking that old technology with the cathode ray TV and displaying it on today's new technology, that high definition TV. So if you think of this in, uh, you know, with plans, we're developing those 2D plans like we do back in the 80s on today's technology and producing and delivering those 2D plans to our contractors. Why? Because that's how we've always done it. So we need to break out of that thinking and think of utilizing the technology that we have today to be able to deliver those projects digitally. Why not being able to use all of those capabilities of that 4K TV with that crisp, clear picture? So moving forward, we'd like to be able to use all of that technology and get away from that because we've always done it that way. So digital delivery. In the simplest of terms, it's really building deliverables that are both human readable and machine readable at the same time. So it's the use of digital data to deliver projects. We're transferring information, moving from design to construction to asset management. It's that complete life cycle of the project that we're transferring digitally. It's gonna offer our users a new way to view and utilize these designs in construction. Being able to see the bridge, roadway interact, being able to see the subsurface utilities all directly in that model, and being able to bring back all of that as-built information back from construction into our asset management system. Being able to track all of the relevant assets that we find to be the most important assets. So you could track something as simple as a, uh, as a paint line, or guide rail. Every asset will be able to track and inventory and have all of that information at our hands. So the benefits of digital delivery are really gonna be realized over the life cycle of the project. You're not gonna realize that all in one location. So you're gonna have an improved design quality. So that doesn't necessarily take you less time to uh, design a project. It's where that effort uh, is really spent. Instead of breaking up into 2D plan sheets, you're spending that effort on a more detailed design because that in turn is going to reduce, reduce those risks and project costs 
decrease construction efficiency. They'll be able to understand that design intent, exactly what that designer and engineer meant by what he drew on that plan, and then improve as-built records. So we'll realize the return on investment over the life cycle of a project. So PennDOT's vision is really by 2025, construction projects will be big using 3D technology and no longer be in that traditional construction plan format. Now that includes your also plan, such as your ENS plan, your traffic control plan, et cetera. But we do realize there's a lot of plans and a lot of projects that don't lend themselves to necessarily being done in 3D. That does not mean the information won't be transferred digitally. Because digital delivery is really the transfer of digital information design the construction to asset management and then back around so to achieve that vision PennDOT developed the digital delivery directive roadmap it started out in 2020 where we developed the website the strategic implementation plan um, the glossary of terms uh, the really the basis to build upon as we uh, as we advance we're taking an agile approach where we sort of where we crawl, walk, then run. So we build on it year after year. Um, we are going to incorporate what we learned in previous years into the next one. We won't be able to get through an entire pilot project uh, and then build off of that for the next one uh, with the amount of time that our project development process takes. So we're taking bits and pieces that we learn uh, on each of these pilot projects and moving them forward as we uh, as we figure out that they work. So in the year 2021, 2022, we got into the digital as builds. Digital as builds didn't require any models to uh, come back. It was the transfer of as built information. We selected guide rail. Uh, so we worked with a team to determine what asset or what information on that asset that each area needed. So we had a team develop design, construction, asset management to figure out what information they needed contractor was able to provide us that information back and it came back in actually a spreadsheet. So it's that transfer of information. Then we got into the single project PDF. Single project PDF eliminated the construction plan sheets. Uh, so it looked somewhat, something similar to what you would see on the side of a job trailer where the contractor printed out all the sheets, taped them together. Uh, so the single project PDF was a role plan, but it was a little bit more than just you know the lines on paper. It was actually layered so that you could turn on and off the layers of that uh, of that plan and to be able to see exactly what it is that you needed. So it was encouraging the contractors and inspection forces to look at these projects on a mobile viewing device. Again, building in complexity as we move forward. In 2022, 2023, we've gotten into roadway modeling. The roadway modeling pilot projects uh, modeled the earthwork and pavement structure also looking at the inspection portion of, uh, you know, of the modeling. How are we going to inspect those models? If we're providing that roadway and uh, earthwork model, how's our inspectors going to look at that? So developing that aspect, 2023 and 2024, we're actually going to let multiple bridge projects as well. The bridges will be modeled to the fullest extent possible that we have built the uh, ability to in the software packages that we are using. And they will go out to construction here in 2023. So building upon that, then we add in the drainage and utilities. Drainage and utilities, we have six projects being let in 2024. These projects will model the uh, drainage utility aspect along with the roadway or bridge that is involved with that project. So getting closer and closer to that 2025 implementation date. So by 2025, we'll have the ability to develop a project that is completely digital and no plan sheets uh, delivered with that project. So the model is the legal document will be the entire package. Now, by 2025, that does not mean that every project moving forward will be digital or you know completely digital at that point. It will be an implementation beyond that point. 2025 really starts the implementation of digital delivery. This you know, initiative is really building upon and designing that uh, workflow and process to be able to get to that point. So projects will then start to be required to be digital once they start in the designed after, we, uh, after they're vetted through these, this pilot group. So 
So the keys to success uh, for making digital delivery a success is really managing that pace of change. You know, it can't go too fast, can't go too slow, but there's a lot to accomplish over the next couple of years. You know, basically building this as a team, so empowering our pilot project teams to really provide that, that feedback that we're really looking for. And not only our design teams, the construction uh, teams, the you know contractors, resource agencies. We want to develop this overall initiative as a team because it's great if it works for the department, but if it doesn't work for everybody else, it's not a complete success. This needs to work for everybody. So we are building this as a team and requesting all of that feedback as we go through these pilot projects in order to develop a process, procedure, and deliverable that is you know, workable for everybody that's going to touch these digital projects. So this is really a paradigm shift. It's the 2D plan approach to a model-based design approach. All of the information that you're used to getting now in your 2D plan sheets, you'll still be able to get in these 3D models. It's just where are you going to get that information? Maybe it's clicking on the alignment to get the alignment report, or maybe it's the quantities that are directly out of that model instead of the tab and summary sheets. So all of that will be conveyed and trained as we move forward. So I always like to touch on that single source of truth. What are, what are the benefits of doing a model and keeping it all in one location and everybody working off of that single model so everybody knows what is changing. So, you know, in design or bridge or planning survey, they're all working off of that same information. There's no double copies or triple clits of any of that information that's out there. Everybody knows they're working off of that same single source of truth, that same single model. So as we go through a couple of examples, uh, highlighting this, uh, this um, information. So in design, you're able to parametrically design this and adjust this directly on the fly. Being able to work with various groups and even a conference room setting, being able to, you know, adjust that fill slope to try to miss a, you know, a wetland um, and so forth. So you're able to, again, make these design changes very quickly. So efficiencies in that, uh, in that area, all working off of that same single source of truth. We're able to put quantities directly out of that model, such as the sub-base information here, and then taking that information directly from our model into ECMS to populate our bidding system. So for various stakeholders, you're still able to produce a 2D plan sheet if need be, but you're also able to produce these 3D uh, visuals. So, you know, taking it to a public meeting or meeting with a property owner, you're able to convey and show that design intent, what it looked like out there on the project. Many options that are available within that same single source of truth, designing these as a model deliverable. How are we reviewing that? How are agencies reviewing that? It's actually a model-based or web-based program that they're able to look at these models. You can cut a cross-section at any location you wish. You're not stuck to the 25 foot intervals or 50 foot intervals that were developed by your designers. You can walk that project, find out exactly where you are and cut a cross section if you'd like. You can measure stuff. All of that information that you're needing to see can be gained through these model review programs. Construction is able to pull from that same model as well, identifying the location of that uh, that say that fence or the material, what it's made up of, what the quantity is. So all of that information can all be contained within that same single source of truth. Then we can export data for uh, fabrication. We need to fabricate a beam or rebar or whatever. So we can export that in IFC or a, uh, or a spreadsheet uh, and give that directly to our fabricators, all from that same single source of truth. Our inspection forces is also able to get information directly out of that model. They'll be able to have attachments directly from that model, say the RC standards, uh, or their daily logs, pictures, and so forth. You'll have all of that information directly at your fingertips, 
with this same single source of truth, that same model from one location. Then asset management, being able to get gather all of that information, who the manufacturer was, when it was installed, what was you know the various you know product type that was installed, where it was, we'd be able to get all of that information and more out of uh, out of all this information, and that's all contained within that CAD model. And that all goes back to that same single source of truth. So to get uh, more information on digital delivery, we again have the digital delivery website. We also have monthly calls on uh, the workspace update. It's the fourth Tuesday of every month uh, to discuss you know, updates that are coming to the, uh, the CAD workspaces and to provide the feedback for our you know, external and internal partners. We've also started a quarterly newsletter that goes out to everybody and our agency partners uh, to really give a highlight and update on what's going on with digital delivery. So if you have any questions, you can always look for that and they come out uh, again quarterly. And uh, it will have various information and feature articles as we move forward. So my contact information is uh, located here. If you do have any questions, concerns, problems, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me concerning digital delivery. Uh, again, we're trying to build this as a uh, as a team and want all of that feedback and to listen to the concerns of, uh, of all of our partners. So again, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Thank you. Great. Thank you to Kelly. John and Alan for your presentations today. Um, we really appreciate hearing about the different initiatives and, and where the department is headed over the next few years in regards to digital project development and delivery. And now it's our attendees turn. We would like to hear from you, our audience members. If you have a question, and I know there are questions, please enter it via the chat box in the lower right hand corner of your screen. I will turn it over to Danielle Klinger Grumbine from the Bureau of Innovations, um, and she will facilitate today's discussion. Uh, and panelists, if you could please unmute yourselves um, to answer the questions. And Danielle, have we gotten any questions in? Yeah, thank you, Anya. Again, uh, my compliments too to Kelly, uh, John, and Alan uh, for your presentations today and all of the work you and your teams are putting in uh, to move these innovative initiatives forward. We do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first is from Robert. Um, I believe this is for Alan. Uh, the question is, in the end, will there be Autodesk Civil, Bentley Open Roads, both or others at PennDOT? And I believe he's speaking to the, the software you had been referencing during your presentation. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, with the development of uh, of digital delivery, we are looking to get that uh, you know that standard, that deliverable of what we want uh, in the end. Uh, so the term we like to use and that you may hear is the you know that data agnostic. Uh, you know, so we want to be able to accept whatever it is that the model is being produced on, as long as it meets that standard for the deliverable. Right now in the department, we're developing that standard based on uh, you know, our Bentley software, uh, but we do not want to specify what our you know, consultants or contractors or anybody really has to utilize to get to that deliverable. We wanna be as agnostic as possible uh, to be, you know, as open as possible to get that deliverable to uh, hand over to uh, to the contractors. Thank you, Alan. Um, the other question comes from Mike. Um, this also is to Alan. Uh, for data made especially, where are the videos and images stored? And that actually, that question goes for all of our videos and images for our projects. That one, I think John's actually going to be able to handle uh, better than I will as far as the <laughs> automation. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to, Alan. Thank you. So, uh, I'm not, not sure what specifically uh, Mike means here by scans, but I guess what I'll talk about with all these uh, platforms, um, we upload into them um, the drone flight data. Uh, within those drone flights, we're able to have 
markers in the field survey hard survey points that won't move so it's using that photogrammetry to use that for locating the photos and the, the measurement tools uh, and that's housed within the datamate system uh, itself which is web-based um, as far as department specific uh, imagery you know that's in the commonwealth azure system and um, you know anything that inspectors are really capturing photo wise uh, to date, you know, that's all really kind of going into PPCC at this point um, to be housed in that section. So I hope that kind of answers uh, all those questions. Thank you, John. Um, this next one is from Barbara. It probably could be answered by, I would say, either Kelly or John. Will there be a drone team for PennDOT? Hi, Danielle. It's Kelly. I'll take that one. So, um, we do currently actually have a steering committee for the department for our UAS initiative. Um, we have district representatives as well as um, you know, different deputates. Um, so as we continue to, to roll out the usage of drones, we do, we do have a, I guess, quote unquote drone team uh, for the department with uh, coordinators uh, within the different districts. So. so if you have any additional questions, Barbara, please, please reach out. Thank you, Kelly. Actually, while I have you, Kelly, I'm going to go to a, another question here. How do all of these technologies and initiatives tie together? Okay, great question, Danielle. <laughs> um, so, I guess kind of tying it all together as, as the department uh, continues moving forward uh, with our digital transformation, uh, you know, we still have and continue to keep that core focus of keeping our employees safe and those working on our projects safe as well as you know, adding those efficiencies or enhancements to our processes. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, being able to get all this information, you know, being able to provide the data to be able to make decisions for today and into the future. That's really how everything ties in. Um, you know, where Alan is working towards the model deliverable for 3D 2025, that ties into the UAS and the drone imagery that John was showing and being able to, to utilize and capitalize having that model deliverable and then also bringing in that imagery and having that visual perspective for a project and helping our construction staff uh, monitor and, and do what they need to do to assist them in the field. And then when you bring in the e-ticket information, just kind of how Alan was saying, you, you'll be able to know who the manufacturer was in this case, you know, who the plant was, maybe what the job mix formula was, where it was placed on site. Um, all of that information will be able to tie together. So as we have you know, the project managers of the future, they will have a lot of information at their tips to see at their fingertips to see what worked well. Um, maybe there were things that didn't work well um, in the field and be able to pull all that information together to, to make those decisions in the future. So. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, just a quick note, uh, Travis from our team dropped a link to a survey about These webinar it's at 11 o'clock, so if you have to run, if you could um, take a moment, just a couple questions survey, uh, we'd like your feedback on today's webinar. Uh, the next question is from Ken. How are issues of connectivity in the field being addressed? And I know this is a, a big concern. So I can take uh, part of that as far as digital delivery goes and looking at those uh, those models in the field. Uh, there are some programs that we are looking at that do require a cell signal. Uh, now, they, they do not need a cell signal at all times. They are be able to be downloaded onto the device. Uh, we're looking at the iPads right now. Uh, so as long as you have connectivity at some point during the day, to connect and download the update uh, to that model, if there was any, and then, you know, as you're out inspecting, uh, putting your notes and pictures and everything like that, it, it'll save it directly to, you know, your iPad. Once you get back to the, the field office or, or so forth, um, it uploads and, you know, it syncs as soon as you get back into an area with service as far as the digital delivery side and looking at those models. Now, as far as the drones and reconstruct, I'll let uh, John and Kelly uh, speak to those ones. I think as far as e-ticketing, if it's related to that, we have built within the application to an offline uh, access to the app, 
where uh, with a few short pieces of pieces of information from uh, the ticketed truck, you can correlate that back to the actual ticket once you're back within uh, connectivity. So we're looking at that uh, solution for solving if we have connectivity issues in the field with that. As far as the reconstruct, uh, there really is not at this time any solution for that offline. That you would have to have uh, some type of network connection to be able to access that. Thank you both. Uh, this next question um, is for John. Do you find many limitations for the UAS program by FFA regulations when applying to transportation work? So, yes and no. Uh, we do have to uh, go through some steps and processes to get approval to fly. Um, you know, there are uh, FAA regulations around particularly airports that can be challenging that you have to be sensitive to. Uh, also sensitive to, uh, you know, not flying over live traffic. That's that's a complication as well as private property and, and some of the concerns you might run into there. So uh, you do have to be uh, cautious how you do this, but they're not uh, insurmountable uh, kind of issues for any given project. Thank you, John. I think we have time for one more question um, before we get to that. Um, we have been getting a couple of questions about uh, recording being available. Um, it will be posted and I did uh, drop the link in the chat on the Bureau of Innovations portal page in the next 2 weeks. Um, so head to that link um, and we'll be posting it there on our lean resources page. Um, so this next question comes from Jonathan. Um, he shares, I think what you all have been able to accomplish is awesome. Uh, it's a common question um, is that is a GS, GIS platform being developed where those not in construction can manage all of the information. Uh, as an example, once the project is complete, will all digital will a digital plan just sit in someone's computer, or can we have a GIS platform that you can access all of the digital plans for roads and bridges? Yeah. Well, great, great question. Uh, GIS is being developed to handle uh, a lot of that uh, that information. Um, so that is part of you know the digital delivery directive and the digital as bills uh, coming back is we have to figure out what are those priority assets and what information does the department deem as being those priority assets that they want to track. Because with digital delivery, you're gonna have a plethora of various information and more information than you know we're gonna know what to do with. So that data governance and knowing what information we want is crucial. So we will be, you know, developing uh, those processes, but GIS is going to be a crucial point and crucial system for uh, removing this data and having access to this data. All right, thank you all so much. Thanks to our participants today, our audience members, great questions. Um, if for some reason we did not get to your question today, no worries, we have captured it. We will work with our panelists to get the response and, and get that out to you. Um, Travis, again, drop the SurveyMonkey link into the chat. So again, if you have a moment, just please take a short survey about today's webinar. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna turn things back over to Anya for final comments. Thank you, Danielle, and I think we've had some great questions from um, for our panelists today from our audience members. My thanks again to Kelly, John, and Alan, and um, all of you for participating in today's session. Um, and as my last remarks, I invite you to go check out uh, www.pandop.pa.gov slash innovation for some great resources that highlight additional ways that PennDOT and its employees are innovating each day. You will find there the, the stick website. Um, you will also find a, the virtual exhibit hall from last year's PennDOT Virtual Innovation Days event. Um, there's um, a lot of um, you know, exhibits um, featuring innovative tools, technologies, techniques from across the department and beyond, beyond um, including um, links to the recordings for um, the sessions that we hosted last year. Um, again, my thanks for, to all of you for joining us. Um, we look forward to continuing the webinars um, next year. We are yet to uh, determine how that will look like. Um, 
So again, thank you all for joining us and um, happy holidays.